All right, let's talk about my uh, long range build here. Uh, so here it is. All right, uh, starting out with the frame. This is the uh, the slim fast uh, six inch frame uh, from RC Crazed. Uh, you can check that out at rccrazed.com. It's it's a they they do a they basically do a version of this frame from from 2.5 inches up to I think seven inches now. Um, so this is the five inch body with the six inch arms. It's extremely lightweight, uh, especially compared to a lot of other six inch frames out there. And a lot of the six inch frames that I have, this is by far the lightest. Um, so on the frame, we've got the Hyperlite uh, 2207 1922 LR edition motors. Um, I plan to fly this mostly like uh, long range and uh, maybe sometimes freestyle. Um, so I needed some low KV motors so I could go with some higher uh, 5S and 6S batteries. Um, inside we've got the uh, Typhoon 4-in-1 from Airbot. Uh, you can check that out at, I think it's shop.airbot.com. They sell a 4-in-1 which can take uh, up to 6S. Uh, on top of that we've got the uh, Omnibus F4 Pro V3. I've been using this flight controller uh, for like two years now. It's extremely proven. It's got a lot of features on it. It's got everything that I need. Um, Actually, if it could have one more UART, I would take it uh, because on this build, I actually can't, fell one UART short because I had the GPS unit with the mag, uh, magnetometer uh, compass. Um, okay, so on one UART, I have my uh, Crossfire Nano receiver. It's tucked away right underneath the camera here, mounted with some double-sided tape, and that runs underneath back to the back plug. All, all of the peripherals to attach the flight controller right now are all done through plugs. All right, so... There's a plug in the back that has uh, TX1 and RX1, 5 volt and ground. I just basically uh, created a plug for that to run right to the crossfire. On the front plug here, you have your TX3, uh, or your, yeah, UART3 and UART6. And it's, six, it's a six pin plug with a 5 volt out with ground, which coincidentally, that's what this Holy Bro compass takes, uh, which is from getfpv.com. And I'll put the links to all this in the description if you guys want to build this uh, exactly as is, you know, then you're guaranteed to have everything work right. Uh, and I can post the diff uh, for the beta flight configuration for you. All right, so anyway, we got the six pin plug coming out. I just kind of looped around one time and then I run it right into that, uh, that front um, plug on there, that six pin plug. And I did have to uh, mix the pins around because the wire, the way that the, these were wired up to the plug were off from the omnibus, so I just used a little tool to pull those pins out and rearrange them. And then uh, that covers the other two UARTs. And then I have the uh, TBS Unify Pro HV, which also can take up to 6S, and I've got that mounted. And the UFL runs out and into this guy. This likely won't be the antenna that I use for long range. I'm gonna probably put something a little bit bigger on here just to get some um, distance between the frame and, and the compass and the GPS just kind of spread that stuff out. And then for the uh, crossfire receiver, I ran the Immortal T right off the side and zip tied it to the front arm. My thought, I know that people will say to get a vertical. I might try that later, but I've had good, uh, I've had good reception by putting it on an arm and I've kept it away from the, the GPS unit and the video antenna. Uh, and I think that's going to provide uh, a pretty decent amount of uh, uh, signal strength that I'm going to need for long range flights. I should have no problem going out two miles with this setup. Uh, what else? What else? I did uh, solder on two capacitors and taped them here to the bottom of the arms. And those run right to the main battery uh, power leads. And uh, that's a, they're both 35 volt. Uh, one's a thousand. UF maybe microfarads and the other one is a 450. Uh, if I had 2000s laying here, I would have used 2000s, but this is what I had and I think it's going to be good enough uh, for now. I might swap those out later. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Again, t the Unify Pro, uh, I've got that wired through the OSD. Um, and if I would have loved if I had a place to wire up the, uh, the smart audio wire, unfortunately, uh, this I ran out of UARTs on this build, and so I didn't have a place to wire that up. There might be a way to do that with soft serial. I need to look into that a little bit more, uh, or some kind of resource remapping. But for now, I'm just going to manually come in here and set my channel. And since this isn't a race rig, and I'll mostly be flying by myself, that's not a big deal. I have no problem uh, going in, setting my channel, and, and 
uh, settings uh, before I go out and fly. For the camera here, I've got the uh, the Runcam Eagle 2. I've asked around a lot, and everyone says this provides the the best picture by by far for a FPV camera. And since I plan to fly this long range and you know go take it out to like beautiful landscapes and over mountains, uh, I'd really like to see that in all its glory through the FPV camera uh, versus waiting till I get home and hook it up to uh, the computer to get the GoPro footage off to see what it looks like. And I'm, I really don't want to be running into anything. I need to have the best possible picture. If I get out two miles and clip, clip something, I'm going to be pretty upset when I go down and have to go hiking looking for it. Uh, the only thing I don't have on here, which I'd like to have, uh, they have these lost model finder alarms that you can hook on here um, that basically, um, essentially you turn them on and uh, when you crash, it has a gyro and it detects that you're no longer flying and it sounds an alarm that can sound for hours and hours, and it's extremely loud. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna order one of those when I find one that I like, and just probably end up taping it to the bottom of an arm just like I did for the capacitor. They're kind of the same shape. I might just stick one right here and uh, tape it on there when I go to fly, and just, I really just don't wanna lose this uh, when I'm out flying, uh, getting far away from myself, and if I happen to go down through, you know, Poor piloting or bad video or bad controls or something. Um, I don't want to lose this quad. So, uh, other than that, I think that's it. I'm going to be running a um, combination of uh, four, five, and six S batteries on this. Uh, I have I bought some what is some eighteen or fifteen hundreds and twenty two hundred five S, and then a bunch of four S batteries for everything from thirteen hundred to twenty two hundred. Um, so I'll be testing that out and seeing what gives me the best performance. Uh, the best, the longest flight times, uh, that kind of thing. And I will make a video on that and report back uh, how that is. Hey, I just got back from a trip from Europe and I was flying the, uh, the build that I discussed here in this video. Um, and uh, I had some really great uh, success uh, flying it there, uh, though I did make some modifications uh, to the quad. Um, and I'm gonna talk about those in a future video. Um, but if you're interested in this long range stuff, be sure to check out um, my, uh, I think I have like a long range playlist that I'll post like maybe somewhere up here. Um, and I'll cover, uh, I'll be covering just more in depth on how I did this build, a bunch of stuff about the compass and the special firmware that I'm running uh, for long range. Um, and then just check out some of my uh, long range Europe videos because there's some pretty badass places I got to fly while I was there. And uh, if you're into long range, I think you'll find it to be pretty interesting. Um, but thanks for watching, and uh, please subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Thanks.